Good evening and a warm welcome this evening. Can we all rise up to our feet and commit this time in the hands of the Lord? We thank you, Father, once again for bringing us on this wonderful Sunday evening. We, pr we praise and thank you, Lord, that, that you are the King of Kings, that you are the Lord of Lords, that you are the Alpha and the Omega, and you are the beginning and the end. We thank you, Lord, that you are the great I am. We thank you, Lord, that you have always been, Lord, and you will continue to be, Lord, the Lord and the giver of all good gifts, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the past week. We thank you, Lord, for the past year, Lord, which has been a wonderful and a blessed year, Lord. Lord, we at this time, we pray for all the people who are here, Lord. We pray for all those who have hopes. We pray for those who have expectations. We pray for those who have challenges and various issues, Father. We pray, Lord, that today you will meet each and every one of them, Lord, personally, Lord, and that you will actually answer and meet them, whatever challenges they may have, Lord, in their lives, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for your worship team. We pray, Lord, for your word. And we pray, Lord, that you will take control of this service, Father. Lord, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us, Father. And we take and we, and we commit this whole service into your hands, Father. All this we ask in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We know you're here in this place, Father. Let's lift up our hands and exalt him. You are worthy, worthy. Lord, we bless your name this evening. We give everything to you, God. We give everything to you, Lord. Oh, those who are thirsty and weary, come to me, says the Lord. Yes, I will give you life and abundance of life. Yes, we come before you, Lord. We come before you, Lord. Every blessing you pour out, Lord, turn back to praise. When the darkness Closes in love, still I will say every blessing, every blessing you pour out on, turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in love, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plenty, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take, oh yes, oh God, I have you choose to say, oh, blessed be your You give name. and take away, you give and take away, you give and take away, but I have you choose to say, blessed be your 
the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Yes, God. Blessed be your glorious name, God. We bless your name this evening. We exalt your name. Oh, he's enthroned upon the praises of his people. Highest praise the
Praise you, Father. Thank you, worship team. Such an awesome experience. Welcome all. Please have a seat. It's an awesome thing to be in the house of the Lord. We see a lot of new faces today. So I want to warmly welcome Sister Arini, Sister Pearl, Sister Manumi, Brother Anushka, and anybody else who just walked in. Can we all give them a big clap, a big Bethany warm hearted welcome? So before you go, please do meet Pastor Peter. He's the most warm-hearted person in this church that you'll meet. Meet him in the mother's room, and he'll just give you a nice gift pack and welcome you into Bethany. So we have a few announcements this week. The first one is that uh, you would have got a nice greeting card, uh, wishes that we are giving you from the Bethany family. Everybody got one? All right, so if you look at the backside of this, we have a small agenda that is typed on it. Uh, it's about our Christmas 23rd Sunday. Uh, we have a service that we are titling Redemption Revealed. And uh, the services will be different to our normal Sunday services. So we ask that you bring a friend, come on that day, enjoy with us, and just be with us on this day as we search the meaning of this title. Redemption revealed. Also, because it's Christmas, we are going to have a small fellowship, a small get-together. Uh, the church committee has planned some cake, a roll, sorry, a cutlet, a sandwich, and an iced coffee. Uh, but normally what happens is because it's Christmas, all of us make something at home and we want to be part of this celebration. So what we're going to do this time is that we're going to invite that day's fellowship to everybody in the church. So if you feel led, saying, I want to bring 25 cutlets, please do so. Somebody feels, I want to contribute with iced coffee, please be so. So we're going to have a small count outside before you go. Speak to our ushers and tell them what you feel you want to contribute with. And we'll be very happy uh, to take it on because we want a nice spread on that day so that we all can have a fellowship after this service. It's 23rd of December, Redemption Revealed. Next, we got 
a special bilingual service that we've been talking about. It's going to be at the HSBC car park grounds next door. Uh, on the 24th, it starts at 10 p.m. in the night. We are looking at 3,000 people. It's going to be a big service. So we hope all of you will be part of it, that you will invite friends. Uh, and as you know, these things cost a little bit of money. Uh, so right now, the budget is about 700, 780,000 rupees. Uh, and if you are led in any way to support this, be a blessing as we take the gospel to the nation and invite people from across the country, especially this Rajagiri, Kote, Batamul area. If you feel led to contribute in some form, please do so again. You can speak to ushers before you go. Uh, on that day, we will be having an Xmas CD sale, a photo booth. We'll have some bookstores where we'll have some material being sold and as well as food outlets. So again, this is the way we are trying to raise funds for the event. But if you feel led, please be part of it. So as always, during Christmas, we also come to be part of Sri Lanka, to touch society. Uh, as you know, the Voice Foundation is our social arm, and they have planned two big projects. Uh, one project is for the police officers. Uh, that's costing about 270,000 rupees. And the other is for the city cleaners, which is costing us 400,000 rupees. Total budget of 670,000 rupees. So at Voice, we always mention this. For a better Sri Lanka, we have to create, create better Sri Lankans. And the church has to be a part of the social network. We have to be part of society. And this is our way of giving back to society. So I know some of the networks are working very hard and they have raised some funds, but we are still short of it. So again, if you're led, if you feel that you want to be part of it, please do come and speak to Pastor Moses. He will be there after the service and say that, you know, I want to help out in some way or the other. Then we also have a special service happening on the 1st of January. Uh, this is a special anointing service happening at 9.30 a.m. in the morning here in the main hall. So the first is a holiday. Please do come, be part of that service. Be blessed as you start the new year and be part of our family as we speak about the words, the vision God has given for 2019. Lastly, we have prayer culture starting on the 8th of January. We did it last year also. So for prayer culture, we already have two leaders. We are looking for six more. So if you feel you want to pray, you want to be part of this prayer culture of our church, speak to Pastor Joni before you go. We will be very glad to take you on board um, and work with our teams through this program. So those are the announcements. Let's take our offering because it's the time to give. This is the month of giving as the people say so. We give cheerfully. And as you know, the church is doing great and mighty things this season. And we need funds to make it happen. But same way as you give, my Father in heaven blesses you. So please take your tithes and offering to your right hand as we pray for it. Father Lord, we just thank you today, Father. We thank you, Father, for every hand that carries monies, contributions, tithes, offerings to your kingdom work. Father, bless those hands. Bless their workplaces. Bless their businesses. Lord, let them give abundantly. Father, let them also see, Father, as we, the church, work tirelessly to expand the kingdom, touch lives, transform people, that their monies are used in a mighty, mighty way. That these monies, Father, are impacting society and are really, really helping to extend the kingdom of God. Lord, bless them in abundance. I thank you and I commit this fund. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we bless you tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for who you are, for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, God Almighty. Thank you, dear Jesus. You're a good God, amazing God. 
praise you, we worship you, we exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Once again, a blessed evening to all of you. So we're so happy that you are here tonight. So good, so good, so good, so good. Looking at all the wonderful faces, it's nice to see good-looking people. Just check to the just check the person next to you and see if they're good-looking. Just you know, just do that. Huh? No, <laughs> they're not good-looking. <laughs> just check, just check if they're good-looking. I mean, because such a wonderful bunch of people, good-looking people all around you. What a fantastic thing tonight. Tonight we want to. Uh, Dedicate a very special baby again. Every time a baby is very special, but so we're going to invite Manju and Jesh. Manju and Jesh. Manju is delighted. I mean, for the last three three weeks or a month, I mean, you, you see so many photos posted about <laughs> her baby girl. I mean, she just... Okay, pastors also please come and stand with me. Amen. Manju and Jesh in the center. Please you look at... Turn, turn my side, please, okay? Look at me, I mean, the baby needs to look at me, that's all, okay? After that, that's fine. Oh, that's good, good, good. Your parents are here, you, like, you want them to come and stand, your siblings, you want them to come, that's fine, okay. Good, that's nice. Good. Oh, beautiful. Jesh is a good father, he just puts the soda, <laughs> and the soda falls, you know, that's so nice. Jesh, you're doing a good job. Amazing, we love this. I just keep saying this all the time, every time we dedicate a child, that I really believe if parents do a good job, 50% of the problems in the world may be sorted out. I was telling you last Sunday, I met a young girl, fully messed up, and the moment I asked her, how is your parents? All these girls started just tearing. It seems that 80% of messed up people in, on earth have messed up childhood. 80% of messed up kids, messed up people have had a messed up childhood. That's a, such a sad thing. And even sometimes in the church, it is the same. So Manju and Jesh, tremendous responsibility. Even as you begin to dedicate a little aria before the Lord. So I would ask you two questions. You will answer them. And after you answer them, you're responsible to the entire congregation. Also, you're responsible to the Lord. Ready? Jesh and Manju, would you promise before God and this congregation to live godly lives so that little Arya will begin to see a Christ-like example in both of you? You do? You'll do? Okay, would you promise before God and this congregation to begin to set a good, godly environment for your little daughter Arya to begin to grow up in the ways of Christ? Would you do that? Yes? You do that. Congregation, would you stand up together with me? Oh, awesome. I feel I want to just jump down and carry your baby and dedicate her. Okay, we're going to do that. Come on, every one of you, I want you to stretch your hands towards little Ariana. Father, we praise you. Come on, church, begin to pray, begin to pray. Straight after this dedication, we're going to sing, I exalt thee, okay? Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, together with the pastors and the congregation, with the parents, the grandparents, I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for little Aria. Father, we thank you that you who gave a life gave it a great purpose. But as I'm holding this great gift, Father, I thank you that potential is filled. We thank you that there is such a great purpose in this beautiful life. We ask of you, God, for your grace to be extended upon little Aria. Lord, even as she begins to grow up, that she'll grow up with a desire to love Christ, to serve Christ, to walk in the ways of Christ. I thank you that her desires will be the desires of the Lord himself, God Almighty. I pray even as... In the Bible days, people like Solomon, David, who delighted themselves in the Lord, so would this little girl delight herself in the Lord. I 
I pray for your extra favor upon her. I pray that she will excel God Almighty. I thank you for supernatural abilities that are coming upon her. We thank you for her. Now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit, we committed this beautiful evening into your hands and we say thank you. That which we have committed to you, you have entrusted it. You have taken care of it. We bless you. We bless you. In Jesus, Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great clap off for it tonight. Thank you. Congratulations. Amen. You just keep standing. We're going to sing a beautiful song. I exalt thee tonight. Come on, let's sing it to the Lord tonight. And I exalt thee. Yes, Lord, we choose to do it tonight. I exalt thee. Yes. And I exalt thee. Yes. Oh, Come on, keep singing it. I exalt thee, I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. Oh, yes. We exalt thee and I exalt thee. Yes, Lord, we exalt thee and I exalt thee. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, Come on, keep singing. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, Lord, tonight above every person. And I Your presence, your power. lifted up if possible tonight. See, praising God is a choice we make. There are many times in the book of Psalms we are. It is said, I will praise the Lord. I will lift my hands. I will. Simply the meaning is I choose to in good times, I will worship. When things are tough, I will worship. Not doing too well, feeling sick, I will worship. When I'm healthy, I will worship. Oh, when my prayers are answered, I will worship. When my prayers are on the waiting list, I will worship. When as your hands are lifted up, okay? Worship team together with me, every one of you. We're not going to sing, we're going to worship the Lord, okay? We're going to worship the Lord. I've sensed tonight worship is so important once again. Thank you, Lord. So important. At the count of three, Bethany, we're going to just worship, okay? We're going to use our words to express our gratitude, our faith, our love to the Master. Okay, ready? One. Two, three. Come on, worship team. Everyone in the church, lift up your voices. That's right. Come on, keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping. Worship the Master. Worship the Master. Give Him glory. 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 Jesus, we worship you. 
Jesus, we magnify you, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, there is none like you, Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. That's right, come on, keep worshiping. Keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Lift up your voices to the Lord. Lift those voices to the Lord. Father, we praise you. Yes, 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 Lord. We worship you, King Jesus. We magnify you, King Jesus. We exalt you, King Jesus. No one, no one, no one like you, God. For you are my strength. You are my refuge. You are my hope. In you I find my security. Yes, Lord, I worship you. Yes, Lord, I worship you. Yes, Lord, I magnify you, God. My God, and thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. My God, my God, my God. I exalt thee. I exalt Oh yes, God. Father, we exalt you tonight. And I exalt thee. And I Tonight, I exalt thee. Let's give the Lord a great clap offering tonight. A good one. Amazing. Good, 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 good. Right, amen. Let's be seated tonight. Amen. Praise God once again. Welcome to church. We're so happy that you are here tonight. Every time you come to church, God begins to meet with you. God begins to speak to you. God begins to bless you. I mean, something begins to happen every time you are in the house of God. How many of you know that we are living in a day and age where many people are not responsible? It seems that people are very irresponsible. How many of you are saying that? People are irresponsible. No. So tonight, I'm going to challenge you a little bit about responsibility, okay? Responsibility. I think if an individual fails to recognize that they are supposed to be responsible... Without adding value, they begin to start contributing in a negative way. Their life becomes a cause to create hurt, pain, disturbance to other people. Because they begin to start recognizing, not living in a responsible manner. And for us as a church, we need to recognize this. We who are saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ through faith because of what Christ did on the cross, we recognize that we are called to be a responsible people. The church is responsible. 
And I'm going to say a big word for everything that happens in a nation. The church is responsible for everything that happens. In other words, the church is the organism that God has called to set the tone for the nation. The church is responsible. Because the church has failed in demonstrating its responsibilities, we begin to see a falling apart in our society. Irresponsible people, irresponsible churches create irresponsible individuals, families, and the list keeps going on. But tonight, as I begin to minister, I pray that you'll begin to recognize that you are called to be responsible. Responsibility is a big word. It's challenging. Uh, sometimes, or many times, it robs you of your independence. It robs you of your own desires. It robs you of your own wants in life. When you become responsible, it seems that some of these things you begin to lose. But still we are called to be responsible. You see, I'm very grateful for the voice. You know, they've been doing a great work. A voice is a part of what we do in church. The voice begins to sense that we are responsible to be a voice in this nation. So there are many things that we do through the voice because we sense, we recognize we are responsible. One of the great projects that we did recently was a project at a nearby lake here. I mean, if you saw that lake, you will just want to vomit. The lake is messed up. A lake at Madhivala, 100% messed up lake. I mean, filthy when you say And the reason the lake is filthy, you know why the lake is filthy? How many of you know why the lake is filthy? Because irresponsible people function in, in that manner. Why do you think we have such a lot of chaos in our traffic? It's because irresponsible driving. Why do you think we have such a lot of accidents? Is it because of the number of vehicles? Or some people driving in an irresponsible manner. But you know, last week our voice team with the Singhala youth, they begin to go. Brother Asanka is a part of it who is helping out in the sounds. They went there and they begin to clean this filthy, filthy. And Pastor Peter, the people around, they were surprised. Why are you coming and cleaning the dirty lake? You haven't dirtied it. Why are you cleaning it? The answer is very simple. We recognize we are responsible to bring about a change. We cannot do everything, but the little that we can do, we all must choose to do. There are many times people don't do what they can do because the problem seems so big and what they're trying to do is so small. So they say, what's the point of doing something small? How will it make an impact on this big problem? I want you to know, big problems could be sorted out with a few people demonstrating small responsibilities. We can begin to see change. So voice, amazing work. I, 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 hopefully when I'm speaking, I'll begin to share a few things tonight with you on this. But my challenge is, you must recognize that you are responsible. And we as a church, Bethany, we recognize that we are a responsible church for the last 17 plus years as we have started launch, as we are going on this journey, we sense that we are responsible to bring change into the country. We are responsible to set high standards. We are responsible to demonstrate the love, the kindness, the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ in our nation. We recognize we are responsible to fulfill the God-given assignment in this nation. Keeping those in mind, I want to begin to share with you now. Teams give birth to dreams. Teams give birth to dreams. Teams give birth to dreams. We're speaking about birth in something and what we're calling the birth in something is a dream. 
God has a dream. And for God's dream to be birthed, God is calling His people to enroll themselves in His team. Then, when we enroll ourselves in God's teams, we begin to say, teams give birth to dreams. You study the whole Bible. The Bible is a book about teams. God is operating in a team. Jesus comes, the first thing he does, he begins to raise up a team. You study throughout the Bible, you begin to see teams, 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 teams. Because teams give birth to dreams. And none of us are called to function individually. We are called to, to join the body of Christ and then out of that to begin to function. Not to function outside, but to function inside and to make an impact outside. So dreams become a reality when teams begin to get together. So right, I want to keep those little things in mind. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 30. Deuteronomy 32 verse 30. How could one man chase a thousand? Or put 10,000 to flight. I want to begin to see that. How can one man. How, how many people can one man chase? A thousand according to that. Two. How many? How many? Two. 10,000. You see. When it comes to God's mathematics. One plus one. Doesn't work. It's not plus. One plus. plus in God's economy is multiplication. One a thousand, a two, a ten thousand. I want to see multiplication begin to take in place. When you and I begin to partner together with God, with God's people, this is what begins to happen. There's a multiplication that begins to take place. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9, it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good or a better return for their labor. Labor in working alone is very important. But when you work together as a team, you get far more better results. Not adding, multiplication begins to take place the moment one chooses to join the team. So I'm telling you, no matter what gift you have, the moment you choose to join the team, you begin to get a multiple effect. Others and you also will receive the multiple effect. That is why you must choose to be a part of this great, great team. At Bethany Church, I keep saying this all the time, we have a goal. And our goal is very simple. It is to fulfill whose goal? God's goal. The goal in Bethany Church is to fulfill God's goal. We have no other goal, beloved church. Our goal is that. To be the instrument in the hands of God to fulfill God's goal. So when you begin to be a part of this great church, this is what you are doing. You are becoming an instrument in the hands of God to fulfill God's great goal. What is God's goal? For every man to come into saving knowledge. For man to experience peace. For man to experience health. Man to experience God's prosperity. This is what God wants to do. God wants to use his people to plant churches. God wants to use his people to do good to other people. God wants to use his people, you know, to begin to evangelize. God wants to use his people to bring hope to other people. This is God's great goal for mankind. And God is calling you and me to be a part of this great, great goal. So tonight, what I'm trying to do tonight is share with you a few individuals in the Bible who God used to bring about God's great goal. And as you begin to read about them, study about them, maybe you might find yourself in one of these characters. You see, we all have something that another needs. We all have something that another needs and another has something that I need. 
somebody has something that I need and I have something that another person needs. That is why we begin to get together as a team. And as we begin to get together as a team, we will give birth to God's dream. Okay, the first scripture is from the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 3. Matthew 3 verse 3. What does it say? The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The first person I want to pick up is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was called to play a part in preparing the way. Those of you who know about John, you might say, but Pastor Dishan, haven't you read about John? John was not a team player. John served alone. I would help you in this point a little bit. You know, John came to prepare the way for Jesus. John was not about building a ministry for himself. John was all about preparing the way for Christ. Unfortunately, we are living in a day and age where we see sometimes some people, even sometimes, unfortunately, some churches, all that they are doing is preparing a way for who? For themselves. They are doing everything to make a name for themselves. Now, this is the danger, but when John, John did the opposite. John was all about preparing the way for Christ. Now, how committed was John to the cause of Christ? We recognize it that John had a great disciple and his name was Andrew. If you study the scripture, the first disciple to be connected to Christ, to the cause of Christ, is Andrew. And Andrew was the disciple of John the Baptist. So what I'm trying to teach you is here, John was never doing ministry to build his name. John always did ministry for Christ. John was willing to let go his disciple for the church. But sometimes you get people in the church who start ministries outside the church and they're looking inside the church to take people inside the church, outside the church. Friends, that is not the way ministry is done. But people who have individual mindsets about ministry, that is what they do. They come into churches and they seek sometimes for people. And they look at you, oh, this person might be good for my assignment. And they take people from the church, outside the church, to individual ministries. That has nothing to do connected with the broader body of Christ. It's all about individualism, about themselves. But you see, John was different. We all are called in Bethany. We must be the church who prepares the way for the Lord. How do we do it? Through teaching, through training, through the voice, through Christmas projects, through the 24th night watch night service, 23rd, we're having a special service. I'm sure you got the cards and you're excited about it. You know, we do all to prepare the way for the Lord. We have, we have launched a thing called Alpha. We have finished eight weeks or nine weeks. Right now, the kids are upstairs and they are following through the Alpha course. What are we doing? We are preparing the way. Then we have what we call small prayer meetings, cell groups, discipleship classes. We have kingdom men, kingdom women. We have m and I mean, we have all of these. You know what all these ministries are trying to do? It is trying to be instruments in the hands of God to prepare the way for the Lord. Everything that we do is for that. Prepare in the way. And I'm asking you a question. How about you? Are you an individual who is preparing the way? Or are you standing in the way? How many of you there are people who stand in the way? How about you? Are you preparing the way or standing in the way? A young lady 
was crying this morning after the sermon and telling me, Pastor, my one desire is to serve God. I want to serve God. I got married and before marriage, my husband told me, I will help you to do anything that you want to do. She said, I was so happy. So I got married with great expectation. Thinking that now, I'm going to find, I have found a partner who is going to help me to advance the cause of the kingdom. With tears in her eyes, bawling out to me, she said, Pastor, it's been eight months since I got married. This man keeps standing in the way of my walk with Jesus and serving Jesus. Pastor, what can I do? What do you think I said? What do you think I said? Pastor Jude, what do you think I told her? Pastor, this man is standing in the way. He's blocking me from serving the Lord. Now what do I do, Pastor? If you want to know the answer, you meet me after the church. I will tell you exactly what I told her. But I can't tell you because I'm alive. People are watching me. I can't tell you what I told. But I'll tell you what. Listen to me very carefully. If any one of you in this room, you are standing in the way of the work of God, you better quickly pull yourself out of that sit place. Don't you become an obstacle for the working of God's plan. Never become an obstacle for the plan of God. Husbands, support your wives. Wives, support your husbands. Believers, support your pastor. You heard that? Turn to your neighbor and ask, did you hear that? Yeah. You must hear that. Did you hear that? You must support your pastor. Don't become an obstacle. Prepare the way. The second person I want to speak about is a man called Elijah in the Bible. Amazing man. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 22. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. He's speaking of a season, an era where idol worship, evil presence, was in his peak in the day and age of Elijah. But Elijah was a man who began to challenge the evil forces in his day. And I think every one of us in this room, we are called to challenge the evil forces that are hovering over this nation. How many of you believe that there are demonic powers? Honestly, let me see your hands if you believe. You're sure? 100% you believe? Why do you believe? You're seeing them in your home? Why are you laughing? Why do you believe? The Bible says so. How many of you have experienced a demonic torment or whatever? Anybody here? Have you ever experienced? Let me see your hand. Honestly, lift it right up. We have a few people. That's good. Oh, that's nice. Now, this is so true. There are dark forces, evil forces that is operating in this world. And we call them spiritual problems. See, a spiritual problem cannot be sorted out with man's brilliance, with man's knowledge. It needs a divine intervention. There are many people in this country who are going through demonic oppressions and even they do not know this. Even in this nation, there is dark forces that have been hovering over the nation of Sri Lanka. But there has been continuous prayer, church, for years, years and years in this nation. And we are about 
to see what are the greatest moves of God in this country and it's coming in 2020. The reason it's happening because there has been a praying group of people for many, 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 many years coming against the demonic forces that has tried to come and destroy this nation. And we're about to see one of the greatest moves of God. You know what happens? When there is a demonic influence, it, begins to, it becomes a barrier for God's people to begin to experience all that God has. And when God's people continuously keep praying, something begins to happen. I'll tell you a, a few stories. You see, if you don't believe in demons, you must come on Friday, okay? You come on Friday, you will see plenty of demonic manifestations. Oh my goodness, last Friday, it's a beautiful young girl, I think maybe 18, 19 years, dressed beautifully. She comes and stands here, and I'll tell you what, Riza, I thought she was Bruce Lee's sister. <laughs> I'm serious. I saw Bruce Lee in her. But you know, these poor children, demon possessed. There was a, a very wealthy person. I love when demons attack wealthy people. I seriously like it. I love that, okay? If you're wealthy and you're, you don't trust in God, I, my desire is that you will have an encounter with the... I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Don't laugh at me. Listen to what I'm saying, okay? Wealthy people try to find answers through their wealth. Is that correct? Wealthy people try to find answers through their wealth. And money is very limited. There's only a few things money can begin to do. It's a very rich person who spoke to me and said, you know, Pastor, for three years, I have not slept properly. For three years. I said, oh my goodness. Every time I hit my bedroom and want to sleep, it seems that a demonic spirit comes into my room. I can sense it. My marriage was about to break. My child was about to be taken from me because of this demonic oppression. Pastor, we did everything that we can do to get this. We changed the doors. How many of you know? We changed the windows. We changed the way we kept the bed, this, that. We did everything. We tied limes, bottles hanging. hanging. I, have done, I have done everything. But for three years, I haven't slept properly. A demonic oppression. Elijah was a man like that who began to take on the challenges of the demons. David Rasaya, talking to this person, all that we said was very simply, you know what? It's nothing for God. She looked at me. She said, you don't know what I'm going through. I said, it's nothing for God. She said, for three years. I said, hey, it's nothing for God. I said, you follow my instructions. You pray this prayer. Do what I'm saying. She said, will you give me something to take home? I said, I'm giving you something to take home. What? I'm giving you assurance and you're going, going back home with Jesus. She looked at me with a strange manner. Yes. But the truth of the matter is this, friends, promise you. Following day, in the morning, Risa, the call comes. Pastor, after three years, I slept peacefully. Amen. What I'm trying to teach you is this.
there are demonic forces that are stop people from giving birth to their great dreams there are demonic forces that are st- stopping god's dream from coming to pass and god's people are the ones who need to take a stand and say you know what i'm taking a stand and i'm going to pray i'm going to do warfare and you watch what will happen i can tell you story after story after story but elijah challenge the forces of his day and mask in you how about you can you be a person like that see you may ask the pastor can i pray and will this happen i want you to know if you pray it will happen if you pray it will happen the third one very quickly i like this i'm not going to give you scriptures for daniel and joseph but i want you to begin to daniel and joseph i'm calling this ministries a part of the team they're called the marketplace ministers daniel and joseph were called to minister the kings and the queens the wealthy and the high class in their day and age the daniels and the josephs so we need daniels and the josephs who are in the church to start making decisions to reach the more affluent significant people in our society for some reason i have seen the christians who have good designations who are running good businesses who are a bit famous who have money they for some reason they don't want to confess that they are christians it seems that christians in that places they want to hide their faith but i think it's a terrible thing it is because of your faith that god has got you there and i think being silent is being very unfair to the god who has promoted you yesterday pastor jody pastor akila they were at a, a function and i got very late to go for the function with a few things and i was so happy this function was done for the 22nd time continuously that means 22 years they've been doing this function and the gentleman who did this function he said the same for 21 years he has done it for his father or whatever but he's done it with another religion but in this last few months this gentleman has somehow had a little experience about Christ and i was told yesterday when he began to do his function there were ministers government officials high rank in people he stands in front of those people and say today i am doing this with the blessings of jesus i am now a christian i like that he's a man who is called to reach a different group of people but today there are many christians who are like daniel and joseph who are hiding but i wonder if you are like a daniel and joseph who is hiding if you are an individual who has been called into a significant position a significant place you are responsible to reach out to those groups of people never be afraid or ashamed of your faith i love when somebody ask me what do you do there be many times people ask me the question what do you do for a living i would put my hand and say hey i serve the king they get a shock who do you serve so i serve the king which king i is the king of kings which kingdom does he represent i say all the kingdoms are under my king sure of course yes i want to encourage you those of you are called to be a daniel and a joseph 
you must not shy away from your faith. You see, if you are in the top and not speaking about Christ, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Pastor, I don't want to talk about Christ. I say, why? Because I am not like Christ. Ah, then for goodness sake, shut your mouth. Don't talk. Because better not talk if you are not living like Christ. If you are a bad advertisement for the gospel, don't you talk about the gospel. You got what I'm saying? Some of you are a terrible advertisement to the gospel. You have brought shame to the gospel. You have brought disgrace to the gospel. Yes. You don't talk about the gospel. The only way you can talk is this. You can tell them, I am a follower of Jesus, but I live like the devil. But I know that Jesus can do great things. Then you can tell the gospel. Otherwise you don't talk. Otherwise you don't talk. You listen to what I'm saying. Don't talk. You got to, you know, if you're not living like that, you learn to talk that way. How? I know Jesus, but I'm living like the devil. I don't follow Jesus, but I know Jesus. But I know Jesus can do anything. Now that's a better way for those of you who are not practicing Christ, how you can begin to talk about Christ. That's an easy way for you to do it. Amen? Can I see the smiles on your faces? Ah. All of you looking nice, that's nice. I'm trying to speak about teams give birth to dreams. And I'm trying to recruit all of you tonight in this great, great team. The next one very quickly is from the book of Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to verse 3. It says, in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebrew Jews because the widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. Now can you see the word complaining? Even Pastor Peter, those days, there were people who were complaining in the church. So it's okay if you're one of the complainers. I mean, you see, you were there from the beginning as well. So it's okay. You are tolerated. You are well accepted in the body of Christ. You are not thrown out because you are complaining. You were there from the beginning, so that's okay. Right, verse 7. So the 12 gathered. Take note, so the 12. is speaking once again about a team. Can you see? Teams give birth to dreams. So the 12 gathered uh, the disciples together and said, it not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God uh, and uh, right, serve on tables. Verse 3. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men. From among you who are, take note, how many? Seven. Again, he's speaking about building a team. Teams give birth to dreams. And we will turn this responsibility over to them. I want to begin to take note here. What are we speaking about? We're speaking about deacons. The ministry of caring. The ministry of caring. There are some of you in this church when you hear of another person suffering, you just begin to tear. You want to give all that you have. You feel even the shirt you are wearing, you want to remove it and give. Some of you have such tender, amazing hearts. There's a sense of tremendous caring that God has planted inside of you. See, at Bethany Church, we want to be a church that cares for people. Friends, a good percentage of our monthly income is invested into this. I think our monthly fuel cost, single English and Tamil, maybe runs close to a six-figure. You know why? Because we spend a lot of time Traveling, visiting, to care for people. Our telephone bills keep increasing. You know why? Because we are all about caring for people. This church is a caring church. We look at people who come to church 
and people outside of the church as the most valuable asset on earth. Every person who has no home, who is sleeping on the road, to the man who is sleeping in the president's house, every man, woman and child is of great value to Christ. And the church, we are responsible the way we can to provide care for everyone. We are a church that cares for the people. Nothing irritates me when I ask a person who is responsible about people and when they cannot give me a proper answer, that really irritates me. Because we are called to be responsible. We must care for people. This Christmas projects for the municipal council, the police station, one thing that we are trying to do is we are sending them a message, we care about you. We care about you. That is what we are trying to do. Through the orphans, the widows, Pastor Moses will start a journey I think next week, a three days or a four days journey, he'll be traveling for 3,300 or 3,400 kilometers across this island. Imagine how many of you like to do a 3,000 kilometer drive. You know why he's doing it? You know why the voice we do it? Because we care for people. We care for people. Yes. You may ask me, but I'm sure Pastor Moses gets a handsome salary, doesn't he? I'll tell you what. He doesn't get a handsome salary. He gets a cute salary. You know how much the voice pays him? 20,000 rupees. How many think that's a cute salary? None of the people, the pastors in this church, none of them get close to what they work for. It's like the sky and the ground. It's the truth. None of them complain about the package. Because it's all about caring. It's all about caring. It's all about caring. But I can tell you this. Because we have cared for this nation. For because we have cared for people. God has always taken care of us. I can stand here and testify. God has cared for his people. God takes care. Last Thursday I was doing a meeting. Brother comes to me after the meeting and says in the night, he says, Pastor, God has placed a burden in my heart. I said, what do you want to do? He said, how many motorcycles do you have in this church? I said, I don't know, honestly. He said, next year, for all the pastor's motorcycles, God has spoken to me. I'm going to sponsor all the tires. I said, what about Jeeps? What about cars? He said, no, God spoke to me about bikes. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Ronald, that's the kind of people we have here. When we care for God's people, God knows how to take care of God's people. A couple of days ago, a gentleman from this congregation sends me a mail, talks to me. He says, hey, pastor, I want to give a gift. I said, that's nice of you. Yeah, I want to give a gift. So, I said, how much is the gift? You know how much? Seven-figure gift. A seven-figure gift. A seven-figure gift. You know why? He said, take care of God's people. He said, Pastor, I want to take care of God's people. Please take care of God's people. Wow. Brilliant. Take care of God's people. He said, Eleni, this morning, there's a gentleman, his name is Prasanna, has come to church only four weeks. He once upon a time was a big time businessman. 
because of witchcraft what i told you about elijah's story because of witchcraft and etc everything has come flat no money to eat even 4 weeks ago his wife comes to the, for the miracle service somebody had told her you go to bethany you go to bethany there's a move of god there in singhala they have said deviyo etana innama god is there at bethany you go so this woman came no hope to commit suicide beautiful little girl about 10 years old beautiful girl also with her I was thinking, oh my goodness. But in four weeks' time, through prayer, through the caring of the church, things have changed. This morning he came with two small packages in his hand. After the service was over, he said, Pastor, I want to give you these two. So he said, this is for the Sunday school. And he gave a small pack like this. And he said, this is for the office. He used it for the office. So I had my bodyguards, and I said, "Bodyguards, carry this and take it up." I went up and I opened it. Little tears begin to come down my cheek. You know why? He has wrapped for the Sunday school ten eighty-pages books. That is all he can afford right now. Ten eighty-pages books. And I opened the bigger parcel. What he said, "This is for the office." a pack of uh, one packet of a4 sheets oh my gosh that's god i thank you come only one month to the church this man knows how to care for the church he knows what is it to care for the house of god i said i came down to preach for the second service and this man was still hanging around I looked at him and he said Prasanna I said I can guarantee you this because you have a heart to care you watch what God will do for you you watch what God will do for you Prasanna I want you to know teams give birth to dreams some of you you're alive you're happy today because some of the teams in this church Give birth to your dreams. That is the way it works. I'm calling you. Would you be a part of the great team to give birth? The next one, very quickly. I'm not going to read the entire scriptures, but I'm going to speak about this man. His name is Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 27, verse 57 to verse 60. Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You begin to recognize that he was a very generous man. What man was he? A generous man. A generous man. Generosity was his gift. Generosity was his contribution for the advancement of the body of Christ. See, everyone is called to give, but some people have the gift of generosity. Everyone is called to give, but some have the gift. of generosity in the book of romans chapter 12 verse 7 and verse 8 tells us something like this if it's serving let him serve if it's teaching let him teach verse 8 if it is encouraging let him encourage if it's contributing to the needs of others let him give generously i want you to begin to see the word generously generosity is a gift generosity is a gift There are some people who are so so generous tremendous You see if we are to give birth the dream of God in this nation we need generous people to rise up I've had people in this church who have called me sometimes and told me pastor what's the bill I said I don't know I said pastor can I write a check I'll sign it for you You put the figure there. I mean, to that extent, people choose to trust us because they know Pastor Dishan and them do not take our monies. That's the truth. 
Pastor, I will resign it. You put the figure. Hey, generous people. I've seen generous people in this church. And if you're one of those generous people who contribute for the advancement of others' dreams becoming a reality, I just want to say as your pastor, I salute you. I've seen this for sure. Generous people will always do well in finances. Generous people will always do well in finances. Joseph of Aramathia. I love that story. He looks at the body of Jesus Christ. He wraps it in a new cloth and he lays it in his own unused beautiful tomb. Generosity. Generosity. Dreams are given birth and people begin to exercise generosity. The last couple of months through the voice, Pastor Moses was giving some of these pastors, one of the, once again, one of the English congregation, friends of mine, distributes a sound system. I mean, a simple system. I think 25,000 rupees or something, really. 25,000 rupees. But you know what? These outstation pastors who carry it, you know what they say? This is something that we've been praying for a long time. We've been looking for this for a long time. And one man's generosity gives birth to another man's dreams. We need generous people. We need generous people. We need generous people. If you're giving tithes and you're thinking you're generous, I want you to know you're not generous. If you're giving tithes and you're thinking you're generous, you're not generous. Tithes is not generosity. Tithes is just saying, thank you, Lord, for the air I breathe. Yes. That's all. Some of you even don't give that. You fill in the blanks who you are. Who you, are. you do that. But teams give birth to dreams. Generosity. God is looking for a generous people. He's looking for a generous church. And I'm sure when God looks at Bethany, He said, you know, Bethany, you have been generous. Bethany has always been generous. Luke chapter 2 and verse 37, please. Luke 2, 37. I want to introduce you to an amazing woman in the Bible. Amazing woman. Her name is Anna. And there was a widow and she was 84. How, how old? 84. Anybody in your 80s here? Let me see. Anybody? 80. Okay, nobody yet, okay. Some of you are getting there very quickly, but okay, right? I mean, so I have about 60 years to get there. So anyway, and she was 84 and she never left the temple. Remember, she was a widow. She never left the temple. She worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. I was speaking about and to some people. And somebody asked, he's a pastor. What a terrible life she had. He said, what do you mean a terrible life? 84, a widow. Married and after seven years, the husband is taken. Pastor, what a miserable life this is. How can you say? You know, I got a bit upset. Because the person who asked me, I can talk to him that way. So forgive me for saying this. This is the way I speak, okay? I spoke to him in single and I'm going to do the first word. You fill in the blanks. I said, hello, gong. And I said, you are not saved. You are thinking carnal. Why, 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 pastor, why? I said, your mind is filled with carnality. And I said, I want to ask you a question. 
asked him, I said, what is the most important book in the whole world? I'm going to ask you, what's the most important book, Sean? The Bible. What's the most read book in the whole world? The Bible. The most translated book in the whole world? The Bible. The number one seller every year? The Bible. And the Bible is whose book? God's book. Can a man's idea get into the Bible? According to what we know? No. Then I told this fellow, I said, Hello, Gun. I said, I want you to know to what extent God delighted in Anna that God said, I'm going to put Anna's name in the Bible. What did she do? She fasted and she prayed. To that extent, it delighted God. God said, Anna, you're a champion for me, Anna. You could have grumbled, you could have complained, you could have missed your life, but Anna, you chose to fast and pray. Anna, you're my champion. And I'm writing your name in the Bible. Wow. And I gave birth to dreams because she was a part of the team. I pray that there will be many Anna's rising up in this congregation. See, so be careful, church, in the day and age that we are living. There are so-called people who are preaching now don't have to fast. You see, fasting is done for various reasons. But the number one reason why fasting is done not to get anything from God but to get right with God and for the benefit of other people. See, people come for prayer meetings to meet their needs. But Anna was a person who did a prayer meeting for other people's needs. If you are doing prayer meetings for your needs, I want you to know you're still a baby. But if you are doing prayer meetings for other people's needs, you are Anna from today onwards. You are Anna. Anna prayed for others. This is what Bethany, we want to be. We want to be an Anna group of people. We fast and we pray, not for us, but for others. But I can tell you this, when we do it for others, He does for us what he doesn't do for others. This is so true, church. He does for others. What he will not do for others, I'm sorry, he will do for us. Because what we do for others, many people will not do. There's a man called Job in the Bible. The Bible says in Job 42 verse 10, when Job prayed for his friends, when he prayed for others, everything began to change in Job's life. Not when he prayed for himself. When he prayed for others. And I was a person like that. Once again, I'm telling you this. Teams give birth to dreams. I hope you can find yourself in some of the people that we are speaking. Maybe you find yourself like John the Baptist. Maybe you find yourself like one of the deacons. Maybe you find yourself like Anna. Maybe you find yourself like Joseph of Arimathea. Maybe you find yourself like a Daniel or a Joseph. We close with this one. Teams, give birth to dreams with Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Worship team, would you come please? Mark 10 verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. To give His life as a ransom for many. Take note, speaking about Jesus. Jesus did not come to be served, but He came to serve. I'm going to make a few statements here. I think nobody should be in ministry if they, are the, if they are not receiving ministry. You heard what I'm saying? Nobody should serve if they are not receiving ministry. 
But the other way around, if you are receiving ministry and you are not serving, you need to make a choice today. Everybody who receives ministry is also supposed to be a part of the ministry. You must make a choice. You must make a choice. I going to connect my life to be a part of this team that will give birth to the dream. It was a divided America many years ago when there was a, a color problem. There rose a man called Martin Luther King. And he spoke a message. He said, I have a dream that gave birth to bring change to a national crisis. Who knows Bethany? This team, the team of the Lord Jesus Christ, could it be that we might be the instruments in the hand of God that give birth to an answer to this nation? Could it be? Could it be that when you become a part of this team, could it be that you might be the instrument that God uses to bring forth a, a dream in another person's life? Who knows? Who knows? I want you to think. I want you to think. I want you to think. Who knows? That is why I'm saying tonight, I'm calling you, saying, you know what? Why not join yourself to this great team? Join yourself to this great team. Join, join, join. You will have no regrets, I promise you. You'll have no, no regrets. I want to close your eyes together with me. As your eyes are closed, I want to ask you a question tonight. A very simple question. What is God speaking to you tonight? What is the good Lord speaking to you tonight? Because teams give birth to dreams. Such a great dream that God has for every Sri Lankan. Such a big dream that God has for Sri Lanka. Lord, we thank you tonight. Even right now, some of you, God is rebirthing. I'm using the word rebirthing. The dreams that He spoke to you many years ago, He's rebirthing those dreams to some of you. Yes, he's doing it. Thank you, Lord. While you are seated, may I ask you, while you are focusing on the Lord, don't despise yourself. Don't look at yourself and think, I'm insignificant. Don't think that my little contribution in time, in finances, in serving, 
cannot make a difference. Don't you think like that? It's not true. It's not true. Sometimes your prayer for another family could be the reason a family that is going to get divorced might stay together. Sometimes it could be your kind generosity. That spells out a message to an individual saying, God still cares about you. Don't despise. There is no condemnation. Lord, I praise you tonight. Lord, I worship you tonight. Now as you are seated, would you lift up your hands together with me while you are seated tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, tonight. And I want to take, while you're seated, I want to take the next 30 seconds to one minute and say, Lord, thank you that you're calling me to be a part of the team that will give birth to dreams. You thank him for that tonight. I'm telling you, friends, you are, you are going to be that person. You're a part of a team that is going to give birth to dreams. Father, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you tonight. You pray for yourself. You thank him. Yes, my God. Yes, my Savior. As a church, we are called to give birth to dreams. We're going to sing this song, What a Faithful God Have I. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're ready, would you stand up together with me? As you stand up, you stand up with this confidence. God is going to birth every dream that he has promised you. He's going to birth it for you. And through you, he's going to birth dreams for others as well. Let's sing. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder I behold your face, singing what a faithful God. What a faithful God have I. What a faithful God. What a faithful God have I. Faithful in every way. What a faithful What a f- 
Father, tonight we thank you. We recognize you have given us this tremendous privilege to be a part of your team. Now we pray that you will use us as an English congregation to give birth to your dream. In individuals' lives, in family lives, in people's career, in their calling, in this nation, or use this congregation to give birth, God Almighty. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And maybe we don't want to close the service without giving you an opportunity. If you need prayer tonight, for any reason, for anything about your life, your family, you want to make a commitment to God, we encourage you to come to the altar. Our pastors, our leaders are here. They will, they will love to pray with you. As we begin to sing this, if you need prayer, feel free to come to the altar tonight. Amen. Blessing tonight again. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, God. What a faithful God.